What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Dave Savage here, and today I am interviewing Patrick Galvin. What's up, Patrick? Hey, Dave. Nice to talk to you. Good to talk to you. So I have been introduced to Patrick a few different ways, but the, you know, the most profound introduction came from Steve Brown. So futurist Steve Brown happens to be a local um, Portland guy, and he made an introduction saying, you got to meet this guy. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I mean, it's the first time he's ever introduced me to someone, so I figure I got to meet him, but it comes to find out you've spoken for a number of mortgage coach leaders and members, so uh, it's good to have you, Patrick. Hey, it's great to talk to you, Dave. Steve uh, thinks the world of you, so it's wonderful to connect any friend of Steve. Yeah, so, so last year, Steve was a top interview. Uh, he is the futurist, former futurist for Intel. And, and Patrick has written a book, which got me excited. I actually, I don't know, I, I, I can't say I've read it from cover to cover, but I've spent a solid 40 minutes in it. It's called The Connector's Way. And, and just seeing how you've connected, you know, Joe Ewing from Jim, uh, um, who was it else that you connected with? Trevor Hammond, yep, big Trevor. guy in the mortgage coach community, James Adair. Mm -hmm. uh, it just seems like you've been speaking at a lot of mortgage companies. So why don't you tell one, a little bit about yourself and two, tell us what you've done for the mortgage industry so far. Well, uh, big picture. I am a big believer that the only way you can do business successfully is through relationships. And that may seem like the most blindingly obvious statement in the world, but I'm a guy who went to school, got my MBA, studied advertising and marketing, and I spent my first decade in business thinking I could attract people in through cool advertising. And I always spent too much money and the results were too few and far between. And as I progressed in my life and as I started working with people in different industries, I saw that at the end of the day, those companies that are succeeding are those that are building quality relationships. It doesn't matter what the industry is. It's all about that connection. So that's it, it my is. passion. Well, there's no doubt that's your passion and you, you wrote a book on it and we're going to get a couple takeaways from it. But I also find it very interesting, you know, that your wife who you work with is a, you know, an expert in branding. You're a marketing guy. So you, you really have this understanding of creating brand yes. and creating personal brands. Yep. Uh, speak to us a little bit about that. And then I've got some specific questions. So a uh, personal brand, and you're right, that my wife, uh, we've worked together for 17 years in our company, and she comes from a classic brand strategy background. So what she has done is helped a lot of our clients, individuals understand that they themselves are brands. When you're out there in the world and people are connected to you and experiencing you, that's, that's the brand experience that you're giving them. So you want to make sure that you know that they understand who you are, uh, what you're really known for and how you can serve others. That's the essence of a personal brand. So an example in my case, I would say, I'm a speaker, coach, and consultant who loves helping people build relationships that galvanize personal and professional success. That's a personal brand statement. And that's what By I'm all way, about. Did everybody know galvanize, you know? <laughs> I, you know galvanize, I like the way you're, you're using your name there. So, so folks, first of all, this is someone that I think you should follow. Uh, hopefully he's going to say some smart things over the next 15 minutes here. Give us some takeaways. So, so know that you're talking to this audience of mortgage coaches. So everybody in our audience believes that advice is the ultimate way to build relationships and add value to relationships. Absolutely. Uh, they get referrals from realtors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's this intentional, you know, building relationships with realtors, building relationships with past clients. So, you know, give us some takeaways. You speak, you've spoken to this audience a few times. What do you think is most important for us to kind of understand? What I have heard from around the country, and I've been lucky enough to speak to loan officers in many different states, is those that are relationship centric, that are figuring out ways to add value to realtors, whether it's using the tools that you provide with Mortgage Coach and you know, your total cost analysis, whether it is you know, providing lunch and learn events where they're bringing in speakers or other things, those who are constantly looking to serve the real estate community really don't sweat you know, the ups and downs of the market as much as those who are dependent upon rates. It's like, oh my gosh, this year is gonna be tough for refi because uh, interest rates are spiking up. I don't know what's gonna happen to my business. But those who have that um, just confidence that if they do the right thing for the people who drive business to them, and the right thing being 
help them grow their businesses, they're going to do just fine. And I've talked to some uh, loan officers who said, you know, when the refi climate was really hot, some of their peers laughed at them because they were still doing the lunch and learn events and that sort of stuff. And they weren't in the office doing the easy work that was generating a lot of revenue for them. And those are the same loan officers saying that they're doing just okay. They're doing fine compared to their competitors who are very much rate dependent. So I really think that your community uh, understands the value of education, understands that they need to sharpen the saw and figure out ways that they can continuously add value to their connections. And that really is the secret to success. Well, I may be asking for too much because we've got about another 15 minutes, but I, I, I literally want to do this 15 minute coaching session. Imagine that we've got this room of loan officers and, and while some are incredibly successful and they're hitting all their goals, let's not speak correctly to them. Let's speak to the folks that, you know, it's, it's the end of Q1 it's April, we're coming into the spring home buying season. And I find that often, you know, that people either have the wrong realtors that they have relationships with, they have too many, they're not targeted enough. You know, what, what advice do you have? Because, you know, I, I love this. It's a story about building relationships, one relationship at a time. Right. So it's, it's about quality. What's some advice you have to, to loan officers right now to, I don't know, make the most impact the fastest with the relationships they already have. Well, I think a lot of people um, believe that all relationships are good and they should treat everyone well and serve people. But the reality is there's a lot on people's plate. So I really think there has to be a, an exercise of prioritization. Like know who you're connected to, make sure that you have that list and whether it's a, a CRM, whether it is a more manual system, and really look and see what your touch points are with the folks that support you or the folks who you want to have support you more and make sure that you're touching on these people in accordance to the relationships that you have with them or want to have. And that is going to be a certain amount of face-to-face. -face. There's also a certain amount of digital things you can do. I mean, one thing that I encourage loan officers to do is, you know, go on to LinkedIn and spontaneously recommend a realtor. I recommended a good realtor friend of mine and I, he called me up and said, Patrick, thank you so much. It meant the world to me because you were only the second person who recommended me on LinkedIn without my having to ask for it. So whether it is, you know, serving the people wait, you're- Wait, wait, time out. I want yeah. to make sure that this fly by everybody. Did you hear that? Recommend, for those of you who don't know, you could go into LinkedIn, write a, it's like writing a review for someone and give them a recommendation. I mean, that's just, I don't want to say it's easy because to write a nice recommendation for someone, it is some brain power. But I, I am going to push everybody on this community right now, recommend a realtor and then pick a CPA and a financial planner that you have a casual relationship with. I mean, don't give insincere recommendations. Make sure it's legit. It's someone that you know them well enough to give them a recommendation and do it from the heart. But I mean, I, I just want to make sure we didn't miss that. If you do this and you get some positive feedback, put a comment down below. I love that idea. Keep, keep uh, going. There's, there's, there's one important thing that um, LOs should think about when they do that. After you write a recommendation, you can go in and you can actually tab in LinkedIn that you only want it to appear on that person's profile, not on your profile as having given that recommendation. So let's say you have multiple realtor, uh, realtors you're going to recommend, which you should. Uh, I think you want to go in and, and not necessarily share with the world uh, all the ones that you've given because it kind of devalues the the, the heft of your recommendation. So it would appear on the other person's profile, they wouldn't know that you had done that, but it just doesn't tell the world that you're recommending everybody. It's a way that to is, create that more is value. A varsity, move. varsity move, because it's true, or realtors might get jealous, oh, you recommended this guy. You didn't exactly. Do it yeah. I like what you said about, yeah, beautiful. Thank you for that. Exactly, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a small little thing. It doesn't, it, it, that literally is a click of your mouse. And uh, I think that will pay dividends for people. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's powerful. I recommended my insurance agent. I have a great independent insurance agent. He steered more business to me than I paid in premium. I went on to Google and Yelp because for that community, the insurance community, a Yelp and Google review is worth its weight in gold. He, he's, he's a great agent. It's a great agency. And it was very easy for me to do that. It took me about 10 minutes. And within a day, he called me up and said, hey, Patrick, thank you so much. You know, that's the nicest thing anyone's done for me this month. So there's a lot of low-hanging fruit when it comes to social media and the way that we can help people and serve people. 
Uh, more, think, uh, more, more low-hanging fruit. Any other nuggets? Uh, well, that that is that is one of my favorite things to do. The other that I'm really big into is I now have cool technology that allows me to put up a nice green screen in the background. I'm sending a lot more videos as opposed to emails these days. Um, I use a little plugin on, on my browser called Loom, and when I'm connecting with a prospective client or client, um, I'm actually sending them a short little one-on-one -on -one video. That has more heft than an email message. People, most people are visual learners, and I'm finding that my response rate um, and my strengthening of relationships is much greater when I send a short video as opposed to uh, sending a long email. So there's a, there's a lot of cool things that can be done. So, so guys, I, I'm, I'm gonna quit getting the, the little nuggets ideas right here, but I love this, because we talk all the time about video, so first of all, if you're not putting a video on a total cost analysis, I mean, you are just completely missing it. You have to put a video on every TCA, but text videos, I mean, it is so easy to just click a button and do a text video. Uh, it is so easy to use tools like Loom, BombBomb. Yep. Uh, ask questions down below. Peter is now part of the community. He will answer questions if you post them down below. So, so let's, let's cover some takeaways from the book. Think about the mortgage coach community, mm -hmm. knowing that they're connected with realtors. It's, I know it, it's a parallel, parable. Mm -hmm. It's not like I can just open up one page and pull ideas and pull ideas from there. But what are, what are a couple of the biggest takeaways from your book uh, so, that you think mortgage professionals will get? So the great news is this book has sold 12,000 copies of them in the mortgage community, Dave. And one of the things that's really helped is that on page 86, there are seven rules uh, that the main character learns about uh, building relationships. And those rules are very applicable. I can't see you. I, I don't know if, uh, can you hear me? Oh, sorry about that. I <laughs> went. Sorry. All right, you disappeared on me. Uh, so yeah, so there is there are seven rules that the main character in the connector's way learns. So at the beginning, he is a struggling independent business guy. He believes, and this sounds autobiographical, that it's all about advertising. And by the end of the story, he comes away with this revelation that it is about relationships. There are seven essential rules to follow. Um, I think of the seven, the ones that stand out for me the most for loan officers are. Serving without thinking about what's in it for me all the time. Um, I think we live in a very transactionally minded world. And my experience uh, as a consumer of uh, mortgage loans has always been, up until recently, feeling like I was just a number for somebody. But when someone was really looking to serve my interests and connect with me, that's what built loyalty. So I think that's, that's the key rule of the seven, I think. And the other is just constantly showing gratitude towards people, not taking people's business for granted. Um, I think you can kind of get into this habit of thinking, well, you know, I get a certain number of referrals from this realtor and you kind of plan your business accordingly. But I think it's really easy to just assume that people are naturally going to keep doing what they're doing and they need to feel like they really matter to you. And I think so often uh, folks just kind of go into autopilot with their businesses and begin to take people for granted. And I think that's the danger zone. So we've given you guys a lot of great ideas. You can give people reviews on LinkedIn, and you should. Hope you do. Uh, you can create a video on your mobile phone. You can use Loom. If every single family that you are serving is not getting a total cost analysis with a video, I mean, it's obvious value. I mean, good is the biggest enemy of great. And if you're not doing that, you're doing good, but you're not doing great. And, and then I love, you know, just the show gratitude. Like, who should you just say thank you to? Um, and it could be as simple as a text, you know, just, hey, John, what you know, I really appreciate you. You know, think of who you can say thank you to. Could be adding a video and doing a video to someone saying thank you to. So I, I want to get one more idea and some parting words before we wrap this up. But if... Our community is going to get to know you better. You know, one, where are we best to follow you on social and your website? And then two, you know, where can we get your book? Uh, books on Amazon in all the formats, Kindle, Audible, uh, print. Uh, you'll find me through theconnectorsway.com. 
Uh, and that links back to my speaking website. I do a lot of speaking for mortgage companies where they bring me in and I speak to the LOs and then their referral partners. So I've been doing events like that around the country. That's a lot of fun. So if everyone goes to the connectorsway.com, they'll find all my social stuff as well. So go to the connectorsway.com. Uh, if you have had Peter speak to, you know, your realtors, to your referral partners, comment down below. I have a feeling, I know he's already doing well because I've had a number of references. People reach out to me, introduce me to him, be a reference to him. But I have a feeling we're going to see him in the mortgage industry even more than we already do. Um, but by the way, is your book on Audible, is it you reading it? It is me. Yeah, I think authors should do their own books. I always kind of get mad when I hear a narrator. It's like, hey, I want to hear the real guy or girl behind the book. I, I, I was afraid to ask you, but you know, I'm the same way. Like, yeah. I mean, I have read some books where it wasn't the author doing it that I really liked. Yeah. But more times than not, like when I think of my favorite audio books, it's the author reading it. So I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, if anyone's thinking about writing a book, don't hire a narrator. Do it yourself. I think it's some, it comes from the heart. I think it comes from the heart when, when you're reading your own words, it really has, has impact. So one last little nugget from Peter that I want to make sure you guys get. Oh, wait, by, by the way, Patrick. Oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Patrick. Yeah, have I done that more than once? A couple of times, but you know what? Uh, I've been called way worse in my life than Peter. So I'll, you know, I wasn't, I didn't want to cut in, but yeah. Patrick. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate it because I'm sure our audience is going, Dave. <laughs> Thank you for calling me out. Um, but, you know, notice the background that he has. Uh, so I use Zoom a lot. Now, I've always been kind of not the green screen guy. I like the authentic background that I have. But I have to tell you, I'm a little jealous of his background. <laughs> and, and just give him 30 seconds on what you're doing, because a, a lot of our members do use Zoom, and they probably don't even know this feature exists, just like I didn't know. So what yeah. do we got here? Yeah, so what I have behind me is this, Dave. Uh, can you see my green screen? I can, I can. Yeah, so I can go in there and it's just really cool. I can pick my background. So I was showing you Portland, Oregon, but hey, um, sometimes I speak in Washington, D.C. I haven't been hired to speak at the White House. I've spoken at Fannie Mae, which is close by. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I, <laughs> but I can uh, have some fun with this. And actually what I really like to do is this is, uh, I have a conference coming up in Seattle. So I'm promoting the fact that I'm going to be there. So you can pick an appropriate background and have some fun with it. And literally I'm just clicking on my mouse. The key is to just get some, green fabric behind you you can get one that wraps around your chair or put on a wall it could be as little as 25 bucks uh get some basic lighting and uh you know you're off to the races so i i had asked patrick and he told me there's this green screen that actually you hook up on the back of your chair so you don't have to paint a wall you don't have yep. to get a several hundred dollar green screen yep. you can literally put it on the back of your chair and then check it out you can literally this is a feature in Zoom. So for all you mortgage pros out there who are using Zoom in one way or the other, get after it. If you have questions, post them down below. Maybe Peter will actually post links to some of these cool tools that he turned us all on to. I, I will absolutely put them there for sure. All right. Well, hey, I am looking forward to having you be a regular contributor in our community. Uh, any last words of wisdom as we wrap this up, my friend? You know what? Focus on the relationship and you are going to do fine no matter what happens to interest rates. Got it. Well, I am going to be interviewing Peter again um, on a Tuesday interview. So if you do have more questions for him, post them in comments for my next interview. Peter, it was great having you, buddy. I look forward to our next. Great, great talking to you, Dave. Appreciate the opportunity. All right. Hey, everybody, make sure you like it. If you got a takeaway, share it with your other mortgage friends, share it with your realtors. And have a great day, everybody.